Thank you. I gotta tell you, I'm a grandfather. I am a grandfather now of four grandbabies, four. And I gotta tell you young parents, anybody out there that's a young parent, trust me, everything they told me about grandchildren is true. But you forget, parents, you've never been sicker in your life till you spend time around little children. They go to preschool and they suck up every germ known to mankind. They're little Petri dishes, they're fungal magnets. If you went to an American preschool and shut off all the lights and turned on a black light, it would look like the surface of the sun in that place. Bubbling, jumping, gurgling, bubbling. They give, they give stuff to each other. Give this one to your papa. <laughs> and she'll wait till I'm sleeping on the couch and crawl on my chest and sit there and stare at me while I'm sleeping. And because of gravity, everything in her mouth is splashing on my face. It's like sleeping under a toxic rain pipe. Kool-Aid, cookie crumbs. <laughs> Soon as I open an eyeball, Papa, this is from Tommy. Pooh, oh, that's Ebola. I haven't had that one yet. Make sure you thank little Tommy. Another weekend on the commode. I can't wait. And the worst is when they take a drink out of your water. My gosh, they hand it back. You got a six-course meal floating around the top of it. Well, I think Papa will get a new water. Water shouldn't have 40 grams of fiber in it. But the birthdays are amazing. The birthdays are amazing. Uh, we, she, we just saw uh, uh, four years old. She just had her fourth birthday. We, we had it at our house. She got so excited at the sight of the balloons and everything. She knew it was for her. She ran down the hall in a full sprint and then plowed right into a wall. And I only tell you this because after shows, people ask me, what sort of stuff makes you laugh? That would be one of them right there. That, that's my oldest son's, my grandbabies, my oldest son. We didn't know if we were going to get him. He was in the Army for six years. He served six years with the 101st Airborne. Thank you. Thank you. So we pick him up at Fort Campbell. We're driving back, and I ask him, you know, I said, what are your plans now that you're out of the Army? He says, well, I was kind of hoping I can move back home while I reacclimate to civilian life. I says, you've earned it. Take all the time you need. Well, 19 months into the acclimating process, Tammy grabs me in the hall and says, uh, how long does it take to acclimate? I said, I don't know. I never had to. She says, go downstairs and find out. So I walk downstairs politely. I ask him, pause the video game. I need your full attention on this one. <laughs> Mom and I were curious. Did the Army teach you a skill, something you can use to get employment and move out? I want you to understand something, son. We want grandbabies. We've earned the right to have grandbabies. And we worship a God of miracles. We believe out of three billion women on this planet, God has chosen one of those women for you. We just don't think she's going to fall through the vent and land in your lap down here in the basement. <laughs> Call me a cynic, but I don't think it's going to happen. So did you learn anything? He looks at me and says, I can kill you six ways with a popsicle stick. All right, you enjoy that video game, my man. And <laughs> let your mom and I know when you're done acclimating. So I go upstairs, and Tammy says, what'd he say? He said, get rid of those fudge sickles, because he's going on a diet. That's what I heard. I'm telling you, it was the food. I was ready to build a trough in the kitchen to feed that boy. Tammy and I started hiding food in our bedroom to keep it from our son. We had a stash of brownies and muffins next to our bed. So we'd go in our room late at night and lock the bedroom door. Now, he may have thought we were doing something else, but we were just under those covers eating brownies and laughing at him. You hit 50, your life gets pathetic. It really does. The brownies are here. woo -hoo! We'd run down the hall holding hands. Lock the door. Hurry. He's going to smell these and want one. I know it. Run. <laughs> Truth be known, that's all we do in bed anymore anyway is eat. We bought a select comfort bed. Don't know if you're familiar with that, but each side of the bed has a number. The higher the number, the, uh, the harder the mattress, lower the number, the softer the mattress. My number is 100 marble slab. <laughs> Just getting ready for the morgue, folks. <laughs> Tammy's number is two. First night she laid on her side of the bed, she literally disappeared from my view. <laughs> Mattress wrapped around her like a flour tortilla. <laughs> Poor thing was sleeping in a fajita on her side of the bed. I rolled over to kiss her goodnight. I fell into a ditch. I couldn't get out. I'm, I'm laying there. She's like, get off of me. What are you doing over here? Get off of me. By the way, if you're a newlywed, that's the sound of 30 years of love right there. <laughs> you're on my hair. You haven't shaved. Your breath smells. Stop touching me. Yuck. You guys have been great. God bless you. Thank you.